At the end of this tutorial, you'll be able to create your own 3D garment animation starting from Quill 3D and finishing in Blender. And I make an effort to make this as quick and efficient as I can. So, first of all, steps we need to do is to make sure that we don't need to make any revisions or changes in our garment because as soon as I hit the animation button, there is no way back. And for making sure of uh, that part, I click all of it and set this to freeze and then activate because we don't need anything to be freeze or our shape uh, due to our animation goal. Seconds of all, we need to see if the particle distance we set to is it something that we would like to have. After this one, we jump into the UV editor and in the UV editor, we need to put all our garment patterns fit into these clusters because if they were like this in the middle of the line or a step like this, it's not good. All of them should have the same size, same proportion and um, that's all. If you don't know how to put this uh, garment into the clusters, it's very easy. First of all, you need to uh, right click and reset UV to, to the arrangement. And then manually, you can put them in the cluster where you need to do. Okay. Now let's go to the animation part. In the animation part, we need to go library avatar and mail motion. In closer uh, connect, you can see uh, loads of motions for male and female where you can download it for free. Right now, I want to go with this one. We don't need to change anything here and set to OK. Now, simulation quality set it to custom, but we don't like that because it kind of makes our garment wibble wobbly and that's not what we like. So I set this to 10. You can set it to less or more that's completely up to you and then i hit the record button and it depends on your uh, computer how fast the simulation could it take have any glitch or error and because if it has we need to do the revision right now so it seems very very compounds and right now for the animation part we need to go to the file export and export as an alembic okawa i want to do two parts one with um, avatar and one without avatar but you don't need to do so uh if you need to avatar you need to tick include avatar and then switch it to tick it should the scale should set to M and then hit OK. Wait for your uh, computer to export this properly. Okay, before we get back to the blender part, we need to make sure that we collect all of our texture with ourselves to blender. So over here in the UV editor, you can hit bake textures and you need to find the um, path I subscribe and then select files you can set it to all files if you have more than one and uh, if you have normal displacement and opacity you need to tick all of this but right now I have only the views it's the same process if you want to take this to uh, substance painter so save and when it's done then close now let's jump into the blender the blender version that i already use is 
4.1. So select the cube, hit delete, go to file, import, alembic, read out of it, and then you don't need to go through um, this process, it just um, for you to see the difference. And point. Okay. As you can see, if I hit the play, both of them act uh, the same. And the only difference is one of them has avatar, the other one doesn't have any. And the thing that most of the people um, bring their garment without avatar to Blender is that with the uh, Cloud 3D avatar, it's very hard to give it a texture and you have to go through all the process of you know, unwrapping and UV and etc. It's very hard, but you can give it a color, not texture, which I will explain to you after I give texture to the garments. If you go uh, to the left, you can see a kind of plus button and pull it to the right. You can spill the windows. Under here, this section, you can see shader editor. But before that, you need to go to edit preferences on add-on search for node wrangler. It should be on and then close. Now, if you select the uh, garment, hit new, and then select here on your keyboard, Control Shift and T, find your uh, texture. My texture is only diffuse, so it should be only one, but yours is if they were more than one. So you need to click first one and then hold shift to the last one and then principal textures. Now, if you go to the uh, material part, you can see your garment has its own texture. And for this one, we can do the same thing. Control shift T and yeah, they are the same. Now, Let's jump into the uh, avatar. For avatar, if you click the avatar and hit new, here in base color, you can set this to any color that you uh, may desire. You can set this to the color, but the thing, the skin color, is that you can not have the color for the eyes or lips and it's completely plain most of the people they set this to white set metallic to one and roughness to half fader so this is the metallic version of the um, avatar but there is also another way of having a glass um, through see-through avatar. When you click the avatar, go here to the material part, surface now set to principal BSDF. But if you click on it, you can easily find a glass BSDF. And the roughness should set to zero. And now if you change this to the render view, you may see, but it seems our light is not proper. So here, shift and A, light area and G, Z, make it a bit upper, S to scale it. And here you can set the volume power. Go here to the render and right now render engine is EV. Let's set it to cycle. And uh, now if you see, you can see through glass. 
But the problem that I have with it, as you can see, it's kind of like a skull in the glass and I do not prefer this. So I get this back to the metallic version. Set this to principal BSDF. Where was it? Principal BSDF? Yeah. Oh no. Principal BSDF and metallic and drop. Yes, yes, I like this. But if you set the base color to the yellow, you can also have golden, or if you set it to pink, you can kind of have the rose gold one. And the other thing, right now we are all done, but we need to set the light and the camera. But before that, when you want to make a video, it's very important the background, the, the background that you can see. I will teach you a uh, two way that you can have camera. One of them is that under here, shader editor, set the object to the world and set the color to the environment texture. You can hit open and look for if you have any HDRI, if you don't have, you can search it easily on internet and it's all free. Let me show you. I have one that I can show you probably this one. Yeah. The background is kind of um, sky bluish. But if you don't want that, that's completely okay. The way to is, you can set this to black completely. And now, wherever you need to have the camera view, you can always select it. Select the view, like I think this view is better. And then go to view. Align view, align active camera to view, and this is not the camera that I want, so I change it here to I think 1500 to 2000, and then frame rate that's fine but it's better if you set it to 30 and uh, a start and the end frame i think the um, start frame would be good if i set it to 54 file format here should set to the um peg video and under encoding we want to choose mpeg4 and the color management it should be right there you can set the quality here medium quality is fine for me and over here the output you can um, save wherever you want to save i mean choose the path that you want to save also, when the camera selected, hit G on the keyboard and change it. Or if you want to have multiple view, you can hit I for having the keyframes. As you can see, there is a yellow um, thing here. And for example, over here, the same process. I will like this um, point of view and go to view, align view, align active camera to view. And the G. Now press another I here. So as you can see, I have a camera transition. You see? 
You can do as much as you like. You can also do the keyframe trick to the light as well. We are absolutely done and we can hit the render animation over here. I hope you found this video useful. Please don't forget to subscribe or give this video a thumbs up. Thank you and bye.